What is up, y'all? How are we doing? We are live action on this, uh, I would say sunny day, but it's actually kind of gloomy outside today. I just got off call, and uh, that's why this plunging v-neck is happening. I can't believe it's crazy, because I walk around at work, and I don't feel like it's that low, but I look at it now, it looks very low. Um, <laughs> today, we're talking about the three things you must do to get into medical school, um, and I'm excited to talk about this, because I think that medical school admissions has gotten far too complicated. I think people do way too much in terms of saying you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do the other thing to get into medical school. And so I think it's time to bring simple back. I was going to say bring sexy back, but bring simple back. We need simple ways to get into medical school. For, for you guys who are logging on here, what up, y'all, everybody? Good morning. I saw Kasim, I saw Razine, pass me. I see faces passing me right now. Uh, Samira, what's up? Uh, Chima, Chima, what up? Uh, Emmanuel, hello. Um, so... Don't you guys wish that it was simpler to get into medical school in the sense that you wish you knew exactly what to do and you had that clarity on it? I think for me, once I got clarity on what it took to be successful, what it took to get into medical school, my life was just, it was so much sweeter because I knew what I was doing was gonna have the effect I wanted it to have. What up, good morning, Nikki, Will, Neil, what up, caught a live stream, uh, <laughs> right? We want simplicity. So that's what I'm actually doing as you can hear my kids simplifying my life uh, in the background here, it's the beauty of live. <laughs> they don't respect the live action we got going on right here. Uh, but this Saturday, I'm gonna be hosting a free training, three things you must do to get into medical school. Um, and I'm excited uh, to bring you guys that because it's going to be a game changer. It's going to simplify uh, your guys' lives and how you guys approach getting to medical school. Um, so I'm very, very excited to bring you guys that sat this Saturday. The link to register is in the box below. So as you guys watch this video, check the description and make sure you guys get in to this training. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be live action. Um, hopefully the kids won't bust it up, um, but that's going on this week. So sign up below uh, in the link. And while we're here and we're live, what do you just want to talk about? How was Thanksgiving? You ever have a wonderful Thanksgiving? Was your Thanksgiving as rainy as mine? I feel like the rain cloud was just following me dumping large amounts of rain on my head and it even hailed i think it was either thanksgiving night or it was the next night it was hailing here in san diego which is crazy because that's i haven't seen hail in years oh you got some sleep i like that that's you know it's a perfect you know, compliments right the rain and the cold you go and you get bundled up and you get snuggled in and you get some sleep so it all goes together um, what time Saturday? It's 8 a.m. Saturday morning, bright and early. Get your cup of coffee in and come hang out with me and learn my formula for medical school admissions. Fresno. I spoke, I think it was at Fresno State I spoke at. And you guys have like the tiniest little airport. It was like a cute little petite airport in Fresno. That's my memory of uh, Fresno. Became vegan the day before Thanksgiving? That's poor planning. That's poor planning. How do you become vegan the day before Thanksgiving? No. You need that one last hurrah. Get the turkey. Get the ham. Get the steak. Whatever you get all that in, then you can go vegan the next day. I mean, what even what what do people eat who are vegan on, on Thanksgiving? I mean that be maybe that's an ignorant statement, but like I all the fixings I see on my table are not vegan friendly. I don't feel like Thanksgiving. <laughs> Yeah, everyone's getting ready for finals. I like how schools, I feel like all the major holidays fall, like like spring break is at a weird time. I feel like it falls around midterms or finals time, so you guys end up only half enjoying uh, your vacations. Uh, what are my tips to get into medical school? Um, in one word, I would say be excellent, guys. I think that oftentimes people think that just doing the status quo just kind of getting by is gonna get you to medical school. And the sad reality is that in this day and age, guys, medical school is hard to get into. It's hard. It is hard. And if it was easy, then everyone would do it. It's very hard. So if you aren't able to step up to the plate and be that excellent, you're not gonna get in. Because every single year there are people who are technically qualified, right? They're, you know, they, they meet the requirements, they're good enough to get in, but they don't get in. So what do you think it takes? Like what's the separator 
from someone who gets in and someone doesn't get in. All right, Nora, who asked this question, what do you think it takes to get into medical school, Nora? What do you think excellence is? Uh, Victor asks, uh, pre-PA. Uh, yeah, I have lots of pre-PA students. It's a very similar admissions process. The only difference is in the clinical experience they want. But the foundations of getting there, and people are putting in the box greatness, right, perseverance, all these things is what it takes to get into, whether it's PA school or medical school, nine times out of 10, it's a lack of perseverance. And with that perseverance, it's a lack of perseverance and learning skills to get into medical school. A lot of people give up on their dream too early. A lot of people aren't persevering in terms of the work they're putting in. They aren't willing to put in the hours it takes to be successful as a pre-med. And that's why you see all these videos on different social media outlets of like the quick fix that's going to make you a great student or the quick fix that's going to make you a great pre-med. And there is no quick fix. It's all hard work. So like on Saturday, I'm going to teach you guys my simple three-part formula for getting into medical school. But even though they're three simple things, they still are difficult to execute in the sense that it's going to take work on your part. No one can wave a wand and get you into medical school. And I feel like that's what a lot of people are looking for. It's the same thing with MCAT. How, like, the... <laughs> I was just on a call. Uh, was it... No, it wasn't this week. Because it it's Tuesday. It was maybe... Oh, on Thanksgiving. I was on a call with one of the big test prep companies on Thursday and I was on with their vice president and a couple people and we were talking about some different things and we were we were laughing because it's it's hilarious how everyone thinks that there's going to be a magic bullet for their MCAT. And so they're saying they get all these complaints from students who aren't happy with their product. Uh, these are one of the leading, leading uh, people, one of the highest rated products on the internet. And they were saying they get all these complaints from students who don't succeed on the MCAT and they wanna blame the product and it's like, it's not the product, it's your lack of work ethic. And as Shannon just said, right, we love instant gratification, but it doesn't work for pre-med. Everyone wants instant MCAT 90th percentile. Everyone wants that. It doesn't happen. You've got to put in the work, no matter what book you buy, what course, what class, what tutor you have, if you don't work, it doesn't work for you and you're not gonna do well in the MCAT. So I just, I think that if you guys wanna succeed, that would be my biggest thing for pre-med, is don't think there's gonna be some magic bullet that you're gonna not have to work and you're gonna get into medical school. And I think people who tell you that, like, it's kind of, I don't wanna say shady is the wrong word, but you know what I mean? Like, it's not its not accurate to say that you're not gonna have to work for your MCAT score or for getting into medical school. It's not gonna happen. Uh, Jolly asks about MCAT. Um, what's your opinion on taking Gen Chem 1 and 2 uh, in the summer in order to take the MCAT the following year? I'm confused about that because uh, Gen Chem 1 and Gen Chem 2, you should be taking that your freshman year of college. So I'm confused why you would, because without Gen Chem, how can you take biochemistry? How can you take organic chemistry? How can you take physics, which are all on the MCAT? So I'm confused about your question in terms of taking Gen Chem in the summer because you should be starting college taking Gen Chem uh, from moment one. Because you got Gen Chem, Bio Chem, O Chem all lined up. And I think that, right, so this again, it goes to instant gratification. People want to rush. I want to take the test now. I want to apply this year. It's not your year. It's not your time. Right? Like, if, if, if you haven't taken Gen Chem yet, why are you already planning to take the MCAT this year? That doesn't make sense to me. And that's a recipe, I think, for disaster. And I see this all the time where students are like, oh, you know what, I don't want to take a gap year or I don't want to do this or I don't want to do that and I want to hurry up and get the process done. And so they rush the MCAT or they rush their application and they haven't made themselves competitive or competent to get into medical school. Not even competent, let alone competitive. Because when you think about it, whose question was that about the Gen Chem? Uh, Jolly, when you think about it, if you... Yeah, your counselor is rushing you. Your counselor doesn't have your your dreams, right? Again, no one can do it for you. 
Your counselor doesn't share your passion for getting to medical school. So if you're going to let someone who's not invested in your future rush you through college and mess up your dream, that's a bad, that's a, that's your bad. So you got to think that doesn't make any sense to do that. And uh, in terms of your question about Jim Kim, this is what I was going to bring it back to, was ask yourself this, guys. I want everyone to answer this in the box. If you're competing on the MCAT against all these other students who want to go to medical school, do you think not having taken OCHEM or biochemistry, you're going to get a better score than those who have taken all those classes? Think about that. Val, I didn't know I was live streaming today either. It just kind of happened. I got off call and I felt like hopping on here because I'm excited uh, for my free training this Saturday. Three things you must do to get into medical school. Um, so make sure you guys register for that in the box below. Um, but think about that, guys, right? If you haven't taken biochemistry, OCHEM, or physics, how are you going to score better than other students who have? If you are only studying two hours a day, how are you going to study better than students who are studying eight hours a day? If you are only studying for two months, how are you gonna score better than students who are studying for six months? If you last minute decide, right, you wait to take your MCAT until June, you get your score back in July, and you're waiting to put your application together until your score comes back, are you at an advantage in the application or disadvantage? Right? Disadvantage, obviously. You can't compete because you are late to the party. You're not giving the MCAT the, the credit it deserves, and you're not giving your application the credit it deserves. And so as a result, you can't compete with the people who are taking their MCAT in January or in April and who are ready to apply on time and correctly and have given their application serious consideration for months. Does that make sense to you, Jolly? I know I'm beating this point home, but so many of you guys, like you just said, your, your counselor's rushing you. Your parents might be rushing you. Your friends might be rushing you. You might be rushing yourself because you feel like you're getting old. Whatever it might be, you guys got to like get off that rush train, man, and stop, stop thinking that rush is going to happen. Uh, Kakja says, I realize trying to rush and follow the same path as everyone wasn't good for me. Better to go at your own pace and have a great application, exactly. Because all that matters is you getting in, right? Like if you don't get in, it's all for naught. And I think that's the other thing people realize, like, oh, if I just rush and I'm gonna take a chance, I mean, no school's taking a chance on y'all, y'all. There's, there's too many good candidates. There's too many good candidates, so why would they take a chance on you when they don't have to? I mean, for real, like, it's like a guy to girl ratio thing. If you walk into a club and you're the only guy in there and there's a hundred girls, you're the cat's meow, right? You don't have to be that great, right? It's like Last Man on Earth. I don't know if you guys ever saw that show uh, with Will Forte from SNL. It was a hilarious show, I thought. Uh, but he was the last man on earth and it was like, man, it's slim picking. So he was like the bell of the ball, even though he was like a, a loser in his previous life. And for some of you guys, you guys take that out to med school. You know what? I'm not that great, but I'm just going to throw my hat in the ring and everybody's going to be all up on me. No, nobody's all up on you because there's an abundance of applicants and there's a limited number of schools. They have their pick of the litter. So why would they take you? Why would they pick you? <laughs> you got bad breath. <laughs> Your clothes is tattered. You got no job. Why would I date you? That's what medical schools are thinking. They look at you. They look at your application. You got a no shoes, no shirt application. <laughs> you strolled up to the date. You show up to the date. You show up to the date saying, oh, I forgot my wallet. That's you. When you show up unprepared with your application. <laughs> the date's off to a bad start. I forgot my wallet. And actually, as someone, I used to have this, oh my gosh, my Nissan Maxima. I love that car. My first car it would stall if you didn't hold the gas. So you pull up to a light and the car would stall and turn off if you don't hold the gas. <laughs> and so it made going on dates or having to pick somebody up very interesting because it's, you know what I mean? You gotta have some real strong game 
to be able to get someone to date you and your car stopping every five feet. Like it's tough, it's tough. So I had to like get very adept at holding that gas pedal. But some of you guys are showing up. It's not, not a good look. <laughs> not a good look. Sally, what is up? Hello. I gotta start doing more lives on here. I've been doing so many lives like internally, like our coaching sessions with my students. I don't do a whole lot of uh, YouTube or Facebook lives anymore, uh, but it's good to see some people uh, who I haven't seen in a while. I feel like I'm getting old. Any tips for that? After uh, high school, I got into a car accident, so I didn't go to college that first year after high school. Then I also changed my major when I finally got back to college. Feelings are feelings, right? Facts are facts and reality is reality. You think that you're getting old because you're 24, 27, 30. Oh my gosh, my life. You're not old, guys. Life is long. Being coming a doctor is even longer. So your time is right when your time is right. And you have to decide. This is what I, I always ask students. And what I always tell my, my one of my favorite things to do is to talk someone out of going to medical school. And the reason I can talk people out of going to medical school is because a lot of people think they want to go to medical school. They don't want it. They don't need it. They don't, they don't thirst for it. So they're not going to have a good time doing it. And if you're someone who's like, man, I'm getting too old to go to medical school, and you really are having this persistent thought and feeling, what that means is you weren't meant to go to medical school. It's like this. I met my wife, Shannon, at a high school basketball game. And when I saw her, I needed her. In the sense that I saw her, I chased her out the gym, I had to have her, like I needed her. I would do whatever it took to get her, and I did, right? I chased her out the gym, you guys know the story. I've kidnapped her on a date like early on to make sure she liked me, all those kind of things, because I was gonna get it. And for some of you guys, when you think about medical school, it's not that same way. Nah. If it comes to me, it comes to me. If it doesn't, it is what it is, it wasn't meant to be. And if that's your approach to medical school, you won't get there because there are people out there who are like me when I was a pre-med who are so hungry, who are so thirsty, who with every single morsel of their body have to be a doctor and are willing to do whatever it takes to get there. No matter how long it takes, no matter how much work it takes, they will do whatever it is required of them to get there. And for some of you guys, like I've said before, you can't be even inconvenienced mildly for your dream. And when it starts to get hard, when it starts to get difficult, when someone says something negative to you, you let that little, I don't know if you guys saw the Chappelle stand up, but every day I think about this. Because something like this happens every day where I get this email or whatever. And it's like, and he makes the joke about people kneeling and it crushing people's spirits, right? He's talking about like sexual harassment, he's talking about people got brittle spirits. It's like, if that's really your dream, that's all it took to crush your dream, then use a brittle spirit. And some of you guys out here have brittle pre-med spirits where you think you want it, but the slightest little bit of resistance, the slightest little difficulty, you're, you're crushed. You're shutting it down. You guys know what I'm talking about right now? That's what I'm like. We got to, got to, got to, we got to, got to, got to think about that. All right? So anyway, I wasn't planning on doing a live right now. I gotta go shower. It's been a long call shift. Uh, my kids are clearly going crazy. They're excited to see me. Um, Harpreet, what up? Uh, so everyone, understand this. This Saturday, training. Three things you must do to get into medical school. It's going to be off the hook. Great. Clarity. For all these questions you guys are asking, clarity on Saturday. So make sure you guys click below, enroll, get into this webinar, and I'll see you guys there. And everyone have a great day. Like I said, I hope your guys' Thanksgiving was wonderful. Mine was great. And uh, have a wonderful, wonderful, productive pre-med day. Later, guys.